Alright, I don't have infinite time, so we're just gonna run this as is. Sorry if the camera quality isn't the best. Dealing, I'm using my phone to run to my computer. It's a big mess. Alright, hello everyone. My name is Ryan Sauer, and I am the designer and creator of uh, this inverted Core XY 3D printer. Um, it's it's canonically or or marketingly called the Empire. It's just the name I came up with, and it's a conversion kit that converts any Ender 3 or Creality clone printer into an inverted Core XY printer. There's a lot of information here. Um, so I'm just going to just start and we'll see where it goes. So why, why inverted? Well, there's not really an issue with inverted. In fact, this idea was spawned from a 3D printer nerd video about print farms putting their printers on their ceilings and on their walls. Um, turns out gravity just doesn't really matter that much when you're dealing with melted plastic. The forces inside the plastic are much more uh, of an issue than the gravity will ever be. So that's cool. Okay, so, um, as you can see, it prints pretty fast. This is using a stock mainboard, an upgraded, like, $12 volcano nozzle from Amazon. Uh, normal extruder. It, in general, it is a Ender 3. Like, the touchscreen still functions the same. It has the same main core components, it, but it has the Core XY motion system. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some math real quick. Um, I promise this won't go too crazy, but these printers typically experience a stored energy of around 2 millijoules based on uh, the bed slinger prototype, and this maintains that exact same 2 millijoules. Acceleration wise, um, we get a bit crazier. Going from 500 millimeters per second squared to 8,000 is quite the increase. Oh yeah, I should state this. The uh, current speed that it's running at is 100. 40 millimeters per second at 8,000 millimeters per second squared. I've run up to 150 or 170 millimeters per second and up to 12,000 millimeters per second squared. However, you tend to run into performance bottlenecks at that point. Either my hot high flow nozzle was not flowing enough, granted it's only a $12 nozzle, my, my main board wasn't computing fast enough. Um, and the motion system started to struggle. So let's talk about the mainboard not computing fast enough. This is a stock Ender 3 mainboard. It is not a upgraded mainboard. How do you get that to run so fast? Well, these these mainboards are underclocked, so you can turn you can tune them a bit and get some performance there. Probably like 30 to 40 percent. Okay. Well, then what else do you do? Well, uh, Arc Welder just came to Crucis Slicer. That helps a lot. Um, we don't use a ton of pressure advance. Pressure advance is a very calculation heavy procedure. And instead we use more input shaping. So this is running with input shaping. Now let's talk about the motion system. Input shaping works best when you have a decoupled X and Y. AKA, when the X moves, it doesn't affect the tension on the Y. And when the Y moves, it doesn't affect the tension on the X. Due to a current uh, issue I was having with the plates manufacturing, mine are not decoupled. Uh, and it's, it's just a tolerancing issue. I already have plates manufactured, or going to be manufactured, that fix this issue. But you end up with the same input shaping on the X and the Y, which sounds weird, but it's also a quirk of how Core XYs work. Core XYs, the, the belts will attempt to tension each other if you don't prevent them from doing so. Um, okay, let's talk about upgrades. So this is using, this has an acrylic enclosure. It's not really an enclosure. It doesn't really hold heat in, but it would it's going to function as a fume extractor. There are fan slots where I can use charcoal and N95 and extract the fumes so that your printer just smell. Um, auto bed leveling. This is using induction based auto bed leveling. If you use normal auto bed leveling, the probes that click, or they click like this, they are, uh, that doesn't work upside down because gravity would click them automatically. So instead we use induction. Um, Induction-based bed leveling is not hard to set up, and it's natively supported by Marlin, so that's nice. Um, this is running Marlin; it's not running Clipper. There are no, there's no separate main board that that was running Clipper right now. Um, so yeah, the induction works as our bed leveling. I am using a bear, bearing filament holder to reduce filament uh, weight. This power supply is going to move to the back. It it is not 
where I want it to be, and it being higher up causes a higher um, center of gravity, which I don't like. Um, in fact, if, if great videos you should watch if you have a chance to watch the B100 video. It's about the B100 3D printer, which was designed as a uh, spin-off of the Rook 3D printer, which was Rolohan. Um, and both both of those community-made 3D printers are amazing. You know, I would I have talked to Rolohan, and I would love to talk to the B100 person. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Uh, but the B100, the, the premise of it was the lowest center of gravity possible. Well, something that this my printer has that his doesn't is a lower center of moving mass. So as you can tell, it's moving pretty fast, and the input shaping isn't tuned perfectly. But still, this is a pretty bad dresser. If I just shake this, you can see how much it shakes, and the printer doesn't shake it at all. So that's a testament to um, how well the motion system is designed, right? Um, also, I'm going to clean up this wiring. Um, the LED lights are 24 volts, so they just run straight into the power supply. Uh, when the printer's on, they're on. I have a design and a switch that I bought for the front plate to go right here. I think right here. Um, for the lights, just a on-off button. Probably will design that at some point. Um, I do all my work myself, all the software, all the uh, firmware, all the uh, design, build, Manufacture, that's all on me. Um, so if you would, if you like what I do here and you want to help, please reach out. I'll post my Gmail in the uh, description. You could also search my name and probably find me pretty quickly. Um, let's talk about the Z motor. Z motor is upside down. Crazy. Uh, that doesn't actually change anything. You just need to change in firmware. Oh, go up and set it down. This is not a new thing. Um, However, this system would benefit from dual Z motor. I actually had dual Z motor on this uh, initially. I almost thought it to be a requirement, but then as a proof of concept, I tried it without, and it, it, it works. Um, you do have a heavier bed mounted to your gant your axis, so you do end up with more, like a little bit more of that Z droop. So dual motor is, is recommended, but it's not required. I, I, this is not dual Z motor, and it's, it's functioning perfectly fine. I've been working on this project for over a year, or well, just under a year, and uh, the first designs were made out of wood, because it was easy to work with. The reason I'm making this video, or like what inspires this video, is I recently competed in a competition for my school, and I won third place for this design, and that video is going to release pretty soon, and I figured I should be the one to kind of introduce this to the community, right? I'll make sure to link to that video when it is released, because, you know, it's a nice presentation. It gives the basis of what's going on, but, yeah. Okay, so, how much does this cost? Well, these kits are pretty cheap. Um, because they're just a conversion kit, I can do it for a uh, marketing price under, or around, more like around, 100 bucks. Uh, but 100 bucks to convert to CoreXY is kind of crazy when you think about it. I wanted to post this video in part to feel out the community, understand if the community was interested in something like this, if they weren't. I've talked to some YouTubers about releasing this, um, and I don't want to betray them, I would love to get them review kits, but with the whole college re releasing this video, I figured adjusting it myself was the best thing to do, and then move on from there. You know, now that I, I won that $500, I can hopefully collect some review kits to send out, I can fix my CNC to cut these plates, these are the plates that I cut on the CNC. Uh, the aluminum ones haven't cut yet. The top one is a composite, and this is steel. This was just by hand. I, that's why it's not the best. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not a machinist, but I'm trying. Um, yeah. I, d I just wanted to release this and kind of talk about it while I was printing to give some, some insight and background into what it is and, and, uh, just really see what the community thought about it, because I was very excited, and I am very excited for this, but, you know, it, it, sometimes it's nice to know if that excitement is what other people feel as well. Sorry for rambling a bit there. Um, let's talk more about motion system and stuff. Okay, so... Um, uh, I learned C+, and I wrote some code to tune these printers, um, 
Sorry, I'm just zoning right now. I can't even think. Oh yeah, you could run dual extruder on this very easily. That extruder on the left side is just mounted to that front bar. You can mount one right above it and just run dual extruder. I om I have a Sovol. The bed is from a Sovol SVO2. So I it used to be a dual extruder. I pulled one extruder off just because uh, I don't want to make this any more confusing. This is about bring your own printer, right? It's about taking a printer that you already have an hot end upgrade for, already have a cooling upgrade for. Maybe you have dual Z motor already. And just making it the newer Core XY motion system. You know, the touchscreen still functions the exact same. This should not feel like you're building a new printer, right? It should feel like your printer just got a just got a kick-ass upgrade. I'm not sure if I'm gonna swear in that, but got a really cool upgrade. Okay, that's that's what it should feel like. That's what I hope it feels like. That's what I want it to be. Right? And so, um, it's compatible with any cooling system, it's compatible with any hot end, it's compatible with large format, small format, doesn't matter, it should work. Now as far as writing firmware for more than just the Ender 3, I bought an Ender 3 in order to do this project. I did not know how, and I had to learn how to write uh, complex firmware for these printers, but it's not that bad. And if you have, a, let's say, CR10 and you want this kit for a CR10, I would gladly sell you a kit. If you write the firmware for it, I'll refund all of the money for the kit and you get to keep the kit. You know, I just want to expand what this kit can do and so having the community write firmware for me as long as I can validate it is perfect, right? It's exactly what, it's offloading some of the work from me and it's getting you guys kits for a free or reduced cost, which is perfect. I love that. Um, if you, anyone wants to, this is this is kind of presumptuous, but if anyone wants to try and push the printer to like a world record or something on Benchy, I know there are some competition with 24-7 3D printing, uh, the 100 and the new one, I'm sorry, I forgot your name as well, the one with the four motors on the x-axis, or on each axis really. Um, I would send you, I'd love to send you guys kits to see what you can do with it. The lower center of gravity should help significantly with everything, or the lower center of moving mass should help significantly with everything. Um, anyway, let's take a look at the print. So I'm gonna try and do this so that it doesn't look. There you, go. there you go. Okay, I have not looked at this yet. Yeah, okay, I also printed one of these recently and I got the same, get ready a little closer. Can we get some focus? There we go. Okay, there we go. So this is the Voron cube. It seems like there's an extrusion issue, which I which I'm probably printing a little too hot. The walls are like a little bumped right there. It seems like an extrusion issue to me. On the inside, there's your bridging. Oh yeah, it's not extruding enough. The top's not fully extruded and the bridge isn't. I'm not the best 3D printer, I'm gonna be honest. 3D printer person. But I do know how to design a motion system, or I hope so, at least. And there you go. I should be doing this in the center of the screen, shouldn't I? Yeah. I went to film school. Not really. All right. Anyway, if you have any questions, um, please reach out. Thank you, everyone, for watching.